before the sun rises and after the sun sets, the growers of our food are busy planting, nurturing, harvesting, working hard to feed the world. These heroes are always on call. They never give up, forever committed to doing more for people and the planet. Farmers are here for you, and we are here for farmers. Growing food has been a way of life for centuries, but the way we grow has evolved. We are leading the evolution of farming, using science to capture the data stored in soil, plants, rain, and air. Simplifying complex intelligence and turning it into actionable insights with Farm Command, our powerful digital platform. We're giving farmers an edge with our innovative suite of digital tools, precision hardware, unmatched services, and boots on the ground support. Empowering farmers all over the world to make better decisions for their farm, for the community, and for the environment. Our highly trained data scientists collect and analyze soil from different areas of the field to prescribe an efficient fertilizer application. Our weather stations that our professionals install and calibrate provide the most accurate weather data tailored to farmers' fields. Our robust suite of satellite imagery provides a detailed view of crop health even before problems arise. Brand agnostic telematics devices installed and equipment ensure seamless data collection from anywhere, anytime. We are digitizing the farm and creating a digital ecosystem that not only connects farmers to their fields, but to key stakeholders and trusted advisors. So while yesterday's farmer had to make their best guess, today's farmer knows how to grow more, faster, and more sustainably than ever. Together, we can support the heroes that feed the world. Our commitment and dedication to innovation, science, and technology is transforming farming for the benefit of us all. Sustainable growing, a healthier planet, more food for the world. And this is only the beginning. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you once again for joining us on our YouTube live series. My name is Jimmy Shan. I'm the multimedia producer here at Farmer's Edge, and I'll be your host for today. I'd like to remind you that if you have any questions during this session, please enter them into the chats, and we'll get to them throughout the session. Our topic for today is in-season imagery and alerts, and with us here is Brandon Dernberger. Brandon is a territory sales agronomist based out of Missouri, and he has been with Farmer's Edge for coming up on three, four years. And in that time, he's become the resident expert in all things agronomy and the benefits of utilizing in-season imagery and alerts. So with that, I'd like to welcome Brandon. How are you doing, Brandon? Hey, Jimmy, how's it going? Pretty good, how about yourself? Great, first I, like I should do that thank expert you. in there. That <laughs> you're on, our expert. Uh, I just wanna thank you for taking the time to do this. Um, if you'd like to do a little introduction for yourself, feel free. Yeah. So as Jimmy said, I'm the territory sales I'm located in Southeast Missouri, but I co cover South half of Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, and kind of the Southeastern part of Missouri and any states that we kind of get into, I, I cover. Before that, I was the precision agronomist with Farmer's Edge with about the same territory. And I was a sales agronomist for a seed company and also a crop consultant, as well as farming pretty much my whole life on the family farm. Oh, excellent. Again, thank you for doing this. We're just gonna kick off right into the first question if you're okay with that. Yeah. All right, so regarding in-season imagery, who can use or benefit in-season satellite imagery? Yeah, so 
if you're signed up for Farmer's Edge for our, our smart package, you can get the imagery. And anybody can look at look at that, the grower or his crop consultant. And if you're signed up for our VR, we can actually take any image and make a VR application with that image, just depending on what point of the season is, what we want to do with it. It's, it's very flexible with that. Uh, we can do any in-season nitrogen based off that. Uh, replanting, we're, we're getting into some plant growth regulators and cotton based on imagery. Typically to make our zones, we use historical satellite imagery, but in season, in, you know, it's a whole different ball game because things change and we want to use the most recent image for those things. Um, and as I kind of mentioned that a third party consultant, if you don't have, if you're a uh, scouting for several growers and you don't have a, the best way to do it would be to sign up as a, a the smart scouting scout or pro rep where you can have access to that and you can basically get the same benefits a grower would and help them use their scouting. Um, Cause basically I remember when I would scout fields before satellite imagery really caught on, you would spend an hour walking through a field, especially if it was tall corn and you really would cover maybe if you were lucky a 1% of the field, you would get to see just kind of randomly walking through. And if you, there could be several issues going on, but if you didn't walk by it, you wouldn't know. With these the in-season satellite imagery, you can look beforehand, find exactly which area you want to go to and go right there and not waste any time and know what the issue is. Um, and I'll expand on that a little bit more later. I've got a few pictures I, I want to talk about to how to use those in-season imagery a little better. You got another one for me, Jimmy? Okay, yeah, we, um, so this one, um, we're talking about the in-season alerts. And I got this, um, yeah, if you can make that the full screen, there's a little bit cutting off that. The field and typically you it's not uncommon to see that on the edge of the field but what really struck me was that the part that sticks that way out in the field and can you make it a little bit bigger there was something i wanted to show that's i think it's cutting off sure i think the problem is if i do show the full picture i can't hear you oh okay okay well uh, then i'll just talk about it um over to the side it shows the the field variance and that ranges from low to high. And you can look at a scouting map and you'll see greens and reds. It's, you're always going to see that. But if it's just low, it can be low variance or high variance. But this field was shown high variance. And that's that's obviously not good. So I went to where that little finger sticking out on that north part of the field, kind of the northeast side going out to the field. And this is a a flood irrigated field that floods from the west side. And what it had happened, the irrigation didn't make it all the way through. You can see on the west side, a lot of green there that was irrigated perfectly, but um, it didn't quite get all the way through. And you can start to see a lot of red on the east side, especially that big patch uh, in the northeast there. So I, I went out and um, ground truthed it and I've got some pictures where you can see the where I was able to see the big difference in the 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 good and the bad. So there's there's where I went to. I went right to that spot, and then you can maybe go to this next one here. So this is where that bad image was coming from. You can see the corn started to pineapple, and the ground's just dry, even though it was irrigated. Well, it, should, it was supposed to be irrigated uh, about three or four days ago. There's a huge difference there in that in, in this bad spot. And then right next, so here's where the good part of the corn was, where it got irrigated. So obviously that's a big issue and shows just how that one app, uh, irrigation application made a difference. So I immediately called the grower and let them know what was going on. So then they turned their irrigation back on. 
and you know we're we're been in upper 90s all week so it could have been a huge issue and we we can see those sort of problems um for anything but if you have irrigation that's that's a huge loss you could have it and it's easily preventable so if you look where it says that field variance over there in the right that that top right is the actual image and as you get to that field variance that's above moderate variance almost to high so that's the very big variability between low and high between the good and the bad you can see an image just like this with the green and red and you could get low variance and it could maybe not be an issue at all and you could spend your time scouting the ones with the high variance so okay um okay no. great um so can you use any image to make a variable rate map yeah so if if you we have our the satellites go over almost every day and depending on the cloud coverage or when the satellite actually passes through you might you you might get two or three usable images a week which is quite a bit but just that, say for example i had a satellite image come through from today and the growers getting ready making an in-season nitrogen side dress application we could take that image and depending on what's going on either variable rate it the, where the good areas get more or less just depending on what what's been done already same thing with the fungicide application and as i mentioned earlier the plant growth regulators for cotton that one's really you want for the cotton you really want a very recent image to decide how you're going to change those rates um i mean it's endless what we can do with those in-season satellite images so with these satellite images how detailed is the imagery that grower will get so the ones we typically use are um it's their planet scope which is a three meter resolution which is basically it's a each pixel is three meters by three meters and and the, depending on what is it's capturing in that three meters it'll set a value to that specific spot and so on throughout the field so however many pixel that is per acre divided by your nine meters there so whatever that ends up being is how many pixels you get per acre and however many acres your field it is so you you can start to see a lot of variability throughout the field and if you don't have if you happen to have a, a say a big sprayer or something we can we can modify that to adjust to your equipment if it happens to be too detailed if it's too detailed okay so when would a grower be able to start seeing actual variation on on their field each crop's going to be a little different depending on how big it gets um but it, as soon as there's a noticeable difference, you'll start to see some variability. And as I uh, talked about earlier, that could be low to high. Um, as soon as you're going to pick up imagery, as soon as like in a cornfield, when it gets about knee high, you can really see some some variability, um, especially if there's different things going on, different planting dates, different varieties and that, that type of thing. Um, and I've got a, a few more uh, pictures about that that kind of explain. We can we can look at that later. Um, so this picture right here, there was a negative crop health change alert. And that's a, a huge part of the field. And then we kind of, the grower wanted to know what was going on. Well, it just so happened that he also got a hail detection alert that went right in with this. Um, so right here, so this is our hail detection. So that, that green would have been the heavier, the, the light blue would have been a little less and the, the, the edges wouldn't have been strong. But you can see those, the red on those fields goes right along with where the hail was detected. So we knew there was something going on. Not not exactly sure what what had been done, but there was 
a huge variance there. Um, as you know, you're asking about when you could start to see it. It really depends on the time of the year and the crop. But the bigger the crop, the bigger the the more damage, the more vari variance there's going to be. So actually, shout out to Megan McCausland. She went out to this field this morning for me and, and snapped a few pictures of what was going on in this hail damage field. You can see it. Uh, this is a look across the field where right on the edge of where it started. You can see the corn was torn up pretty good there. Um, most likely going to be a pretty significant yield damage. And we know exactly where the damage happened, so we'll be able to track that yield if the growers need to turn it into their insurance. Yeah, as you can see there, she snapped a lot of good ones for me. Um, and in the case of if that had been a little earlier, I don't think the grower's going to it'd be worth replanting this this late in the year, but say there have been some similar damage earlier in the year. We could have taken that image and made a variable rate planting map and gone back and planted where we wanted to replant and know exactly where to go and how much. Are you there, Jimmy? I'm here. Oh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear my last question? I don't know if you caught that. No, I didn't. Okay. My, my apologies. So a grower is looking at their imagery throughout the whole season. Is there a benefit for a grower to look at imagery after harvest? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, you'd like, if there's an issue going on, you'd like to catch it as soon as possible. But sometimes that just doesn't happen, and depending, you know, if you say you don't have a scout and you don't really pay attention to what's going on, you have a lot of acres, you have other issues going on. Then you get to a field at harvest and there's a big part of the field that yields significantly less. You can go back through the imagery throughout the year and it'll start to tell a story. And depending on when that starts, you might start to think what happened around that time and really go into detail. Um, so this, if you, yeah, this is a good one for, this was that hail damage field. And if you look over on the right, that scale from low variance to high variance, that's as high as it goes. The difference between the, the, the bad to the good. That's if, if I didn't have that hail detection and I, I wanted to know what was going on, obviously we, we knew it was hail because we got the hail damage alert. But if I didn't know, know it was hail, I would know exactly where to go scout that field. And be able to figure out what's going on this this picture right here if you look it looks like there's a lot of difference there's a lot of reds and a lot of green but if you look over at the the field variance there's really low variability and if you were say you had a limited time to scout a field you might not even want to go to this field because there's not a whole lot of issue even though it looks like it you could spend your time on going on scouting fields with the higher variance and really uh, use your time effectively and efficiently. And so we can start a lot of replanting, uh, drowned out areas. You're, you'll see a lot of high variability. And then we can take that image and make a VR planning replant map for those areas, which we've been seeing that a lot of. any any issue going on we we can we can find out what's going on fix the problem the sooner the better but kind of going back to your um after after harvest question yeah it's better to catch it sooner rather than later but anytime you can backtrack that and find out what's going on it's, it's only going to help you in the long run okay that's awesome uh brandon i've got a few questions here how do how would a grower extract information from satellite data during cloudy days? Uh, you know, keeping in view the time lag and recommendations. And so, how how would one go about that, like dealing with clouds? Yeah. So even when there there is a cloudy day, we still have a satellite going through that's going to capture an image. 
and say it gets to be several weeks of cloudy days and we're not getting any good imagery, we can look at that those clouds and we can turn the cloud filter off and just to look at it to see what's going on. All right, we know there's clouds, but let's just see if maybe there's a little bit of a break in the field. We can see something. And that's obviously not the best case scenario. Obviously, it's better to have a picture without any clouds. But we're, we're even if there are clouds, we're still going. We're still capturing data. So obviously, the the imagery we've shown has shown hail damage. Will it show other types of damage, like pest damage or like insect damage? Is that a possibility too? Yeah, how- yeah, going back to to the variability. Um, anytime. If it's gonna, if it's causing damage, it's gonna show up. If it's minor damage that's not noticeable, then the yield loss is probably isn't very high anyway. But the more damage that the disease or insect does, the more it's gonna show up. Then that's really gonna alert alert you to, all right, I gotta go look at this. There's something major going on here, and it could be you could have maybe moderate variance, but in a big part of a field. Okay, so with all that damage, how long on is there an average as to how long that type of damage, hail, insect, pest, any anything that would show up on imagery? Like how long does that take? Well, as soon as that the the damage would start to show up, if you were actually in the field looking at it, your the satellite image is going to pick it up. Um, going back, to what I said if it's minor damage, it's probably not going to be a huge yield loss anyway. So the bigger the damage, the more it's going to show up and alert someone to go check it out. Okay, so essentially, it's pretty instant. As long as if it's there, it'll show up. Yeah. So it, that so the the negative health alerts that, that I referred to earlier. If like say we a satellite went through a day in a field and everything went was great. Now a week later, that image we get an image that all right, where this this field looked great a week ago now there's a, there's a lot of variability and there's, there's something going on. Well, you'll get an alert to let you know that there's been a health change from say a week ago till today or a week from today to let you, to alert you. And it could be a, a positive health or negative. Um, in the case of weeds, if you get a flush of weeds, it could show you a huge um, positive health change. And you might think, well, there, there's no reason that should happen it's got to be weeds because you're getting more green green light reflected from the satellites. Okay, so one more question. Talking about the benefits of uh, in-season imagery. If you're talking to a grower and you're trying to convince them, you know, you need to do this, what is the one single benefit you would tell a grower about in-season imagery? The biggest benefit. Well, it, it it shows them right where they need to focus their their time and attention to um if if they're not if they're not getting any imagery or not paying any attention to it they there's always something going on in a field there's always parts of the field that are going to be better and worse and if we can correct those those low spots those bad spots and make them better. There's, it's always you're always going to make more money. <laughs> I guess that's the way to put it. You're you can correct problems before small problems before they come big problems. Gotcha. Perfect. All right, Brandon. That's all the questions we have for today. I'm not sure if you have any closing statements. Do you have anything else you'd like to add just to finish it off? No, I don't have any uh, good closing lines there, Jimmy. I should have thought of one. <laughs> no worries. Next time. All right. Well, thank you again, Brandon, for, for taking the time to do do this with us. And thank you all for, for attending. And remember to click that subscribe button, that alert button, to make sure you're alerted to all our future live sessions and any new video content we upload. So again, Brandon, thank you for doing this. And thank you again to everyone who attended today. Have a great day, everyone. And take care. See you. Bye, Brandon.